Chairman Crapo, Ranking Member Brown, members of the committee, my name is Greg Baer and I'm the CEO of the Bank Policy Institute. BPI is a nonpartisan research and advocacy group representing the nation's leading banks. We strongly support legislation to end the use of anonymous shell companies and hope this hearing will prompt congressional action. Anonymous shell companies are a key method used by criminals to hide assets for a wide range of illicit activities, including human trafficking, terrorist financing, money laundering, and kleptocracy. All too often, criminal investigators have hit a dead end when law enforcement encounters a company in which hidden ownership and lacks the time and resources to peel back the many layers of secrecy. And the more sophisticated and sinister the criminal, the more layers there generally are. In his testimony, Garen Coleman presents numerous cases that illustrate that this concern is very real, not hypothetical. Legislation to, a law to allow law enforcement to look beyond the corporate fail, including the draft recently circulated by a bipartisan group of senators on this committee, would make our country safer and enhance the reputation of the United States as a country that fights against, not harbors, the worst people in the world. It has been a pleasure to join on this issue with the Fraternal Order of Police and hundreds of former law enforcement and national security officials who have attested to its importance. Currently, the nation's law banks assist law enforcement by determining the ownership of companies that open a bank account and then using this information to monitor the account for activity. However, that regulatory regime has been no substitute for beneficial ownership legislation. First, it does not cover shell companies that never open a bank account because they conduct no business in this country. These pure shell companies are virtually invisible. Second, while banks gather ownership information from their customers, they do not disclose it to law enforcement. Law enforcement learns of it only if the bank identifies suspicious activity. Legislation would cure these two problems. Furthermore, for banks, and importantly for the business clients who must actually provide this information, legislation would centralize the ownership identification process and make it more efficient. Two primary concerns have been expressed about such legislation, burden and privacy, but let's consider a few facts. First, the draft legislation requires a business owner to disclose only the most basic of information, name, address, date of birth, and some form of ID, such as a driver's license or passport number. That is all. And since the great majority of American businesses have only one owner, it would be generally provided by and about one person. Second, as noted, this information is generally already provided any time a company opens a bank account. Of course, any legitimate U.S. business, large or small, probably has a bank account because any business that earns money or pays expenses or employs people must have a bank account. Thus, for legitimate businesses, legislation would not increase reporting obligations and would likely decrease them. Third, with respect to privacy, this basic information is already known to various arms of the government, including the DMV and the IRS. Unauthorized disclosure by law enforcement or a bank employee would come with severe penalties. And banks have a record of keeping such information secret. A FinCEN directory should wor not worry legitimate business owners. It should, however, worry a drug trafficker or kleptocrat using a shell company to hold a multi-million dollar condominium in West Palm Beach. Most small business owners, in fact, are willing to share information to help keep our country safe. According to a poll conducted by Morning Consult on behalf of BPI, released today, small business owners support measures to end anonymous shell companies. Of those who had an opinion, 75% of small business owners supported requiring business owners to provide their personal information when forming their company to help close this loophole in U.S. law. Furthermore, two-thirds of small business owners stated that providing their personal information when registering their company would not be burdensome. Lastly, it is worth noting that the UK, EU, and innumerable other nations have adopted such a directory without damage to their small businesses or any other intended, unintended consequences. We can learn from their example. The stakes here are very high, and the time has come for the United States to act. We look forward to working with you on this important issue, and I look forward to your questions.